Hey everyone, welcome to this video and today I've been tasked with tattooing a portrait of Batman's enemy, Bane. Also added to it, there's going to be a quote from the Netflix series The Witcher. Uh, I'm going to be showing you all the equipment that I use. I'm going to be giving commentary on top of the video, uh, explaining all the techniques that I use. So let's not waste any more time guys and get straight into it. Okay, so these are DaVinci cartridges. There's a 7 round liner and an 11 curve mag, uh, both double zeros. The ink is dynamic black. And then moving from left to right, we've got the Silverback 666 series. Um, and I've just labelled them there so you can see them. And then I'm using Intense uh, White, one of the gold label inks. And then you can just see the workstation set up there. That's with a Cheyenne pen. I've got the rinse cup um, and everything set up, ready to go. Wipes. Okay, so I've already shaved the leg and sprayed it with alcohol, so this is the stencil solution I'm using now. And I've done this with an inkjet stencil. If you want to see more on inkjet stencils, you can click on the link I put on the screen now, and that'll take you to a video after you've watched this one. You want to check them out. I'm just hovering the stencil over the skin there, because obviously once you pressed it down, you can't take it up again, or you're going to double print it. So I'm happy with there that is. I've got to be careful with that tattoo because this client's already got a tattoo on the side of his leg there, so I want to miss that. I'm just putting a nice bit of equal pressure on there. And then just to make sure that it's all touched the skin and make the pressure more equal, I use um, just a tissue. And that looks like it's on nice. I'm just going to pull it off now. And it's quite a basic stencil, this one. Um, but it's all I need to, to pull this particular tattoo off. So you can see it's on the skin. And that's transferred really well. So I'm starting from bottom to top. And I'm just getting this um, script in. This script was a typewriter font. So it's like um, patchy some of the letters. So when, when you're... Um, tattooing it you're leaving out little bits to give that typewriter effect and the, the the writing at the top the evil is evil that's going to be negative um, writing which means I'm going to go around the edge of it if you notice where I'm stretching um, I'm just going to highlight my fingers there um, you can see I'm taking precaution not to smudge my stencil uh, and whenever I can it's always best to um, not touch your stencil so it's keep all the work area nice and clean you can see I'm just tattooing there the work area is super clean just dabbing a little bit of Vaseline on there I'm not really wiping the ink away I'm dabbing it away and that script's just going in nice I'm just got a close up there some of this script And this is all with the seven round liner with the Cheyenne pen. It's running at 11 volts if anyone wants to know what machine's running at. And I always run my Cheyenne at 11 for lining. If you can see on the letter B there, it's got that little bit missing on the ink. And again, that's just to, to bring that effect through that typewriter font. All just one pass. Uh, if you want to know how to do one pass lines, I'll stick um, a card up on the screen now and if you click that you can watch that after this video uh, just explaining how to perform one pass lines just coming around on the A there and we notice there's no ink pooling around the area the skin is like super clean uh, and it just makes things loads easier if you've got a nice clean work area Just pulling down there on this last letter. So now what I'm doing is here, because this is going to be negative writing, so basically the, the, the black is going to be around the edge. Um, I've not stenciled it any different. You can see that, that the stencil there, it's, it says evil is evil. Um, and I'm making a conscious effort to go round the edge of the writing uh, and all I'm doing now I'm just sketching it in basically 
and then when I come back later I'll blacken all the edges off and then that'll give that effect so the writing will look white. So essentially the writing is going to be the client's skin colour. You can see on that V there I've took it really really wide. For stuff like this it's better to take it wider than normal and then you can go back and close up if you need to later on. So moving on to the design now, I've still got the liner on, I've not moved to the mag yet. When I do tattoos, I probably use my liner for about 10% of the tattoo. If that, um, I'm a lot more comfier using the mag to uh, do the tattoo. But um, for this particular one, all I'm doing is here, I'm just basically sketching in all the major lines of the stencil. Uh, and I think if you do it that way, once you've got all like the, the major details in, then you can really chill with it and you can really start bringing the shade together and whatnot. Just coming around the eye area here. And if you can see when I move my right hand there, that's an eye under there. Uh, and this is times when you really have to have like trust in your stencil and you really have to, you know, trust that um, the tattoo is, is going to look like the reference image because you can see that the right eye um, it doesn't even look like an eye at the moment and I think this is a mistake that a lot of people make where they panic and then they'll start doing a tattoo and it doesn't look um, like the reference image uh, at the beginning when they're first um, putting all just the basics down and what they try to do is try to refine um, the, the, the tattoo just on the fly, just on the skin, instead of just sticking to the reference image, just sticking to the plan. Uh, so my advice to anyone that's doing any sort of realism, just trust your stencil uh, and stick to the plan. Don't, don't go off topic, don't, you know, just stick to what you know is, is gonna work and it will come together when the shade goes in. Because all tattoos look a bit weird um, when it's just basic shades in. Uh, ba basic lines, sorry. Um, but when the shade starts coming together, you'll see the tattoo just appearing on the skin. So what I'm using there at the side, that's like a single six um, silver back ink. And you can see there's no blood on the skin. The skin's not red. It's not raised up. I'm just brushing over there and I'm building those shades up. And this part, so I'm going from a solid black and I want a seamless blend. Uh, and how I've done that, I've started off with solid black and then I've brushed out with a triple six and then I'll brush out from a triple six to a double six and just almost polishing the skin, uh, making those blends um, transist from um, dark to light uh, with no visible transitions between them. Um, I go in depth on how to do this on a video, um, how to polish tattoos. I call it polishing, people call it different, different names. But if you want to see that, I'll put a card up on the screen, you can check that out. And you can see again, the, the, the skin is not red, it's not raised, the work area is still super clean. And I'm just looking for those imperfections um, where it's dark or maybe a little bit patchy and I'm just polishing over the top of them just bringing those shades together for that smooth transition and I think it's really important to get these sort of techniques nailed down for anything like realism uh, and this can be applied to colour as well if you you know if you're doing colour blends uh, it's the same process just going over the skin nice and gentle and you can see that now it's really starting to blend together it's gone from that really dark area and it's just blending up to that light area there and I can still see a few little patchy bits, so that's why I'm just polishing over the tops of those. And the skin's not overworked at all. Um, when I'm shading, I've dropped my, sh my machine down now to 9 volts. Uh, around about 9, 9.5 volts. Um, and I find that works for me with a Cheyenne pen. Uh, when it's working together with my hand speed. So I'm just around the eye area here, and again, it's just a matter of looking at your reference image, keep checking it, checking it, and checking it again, making sure every time you lay that shade down, it's as in the exact place where your reference image is. And if you do it like that and you're methodical about it, um, there's no reason why your tattoo shouldn't look like your reference image when you're finished. You can see it's, it's starting to look more like an eye now. 
And if you notice, I've gone under that eye there and then I've left it and I'll probably go back to that in a bit. Uh, and the reason I've done that is because sometimes shades take a while to come through and a mistake you can make is to um, overshade to the point where you wipe off and then you've gone too dark and then that can throw the whole tattoo. It could actually ruin a tattoo if you're not too careful with it. So it's always best to wear on caution, um, go a little bit lighter and then brush, brush a few shades over, do a few passes, then move to the next bit of the tattoo and then go back to that bit once it's settled in. Just coming down the side of the eye here, it looks like I'm using like a single six for this shade. And you can see how, how light I'm just brushing the skin there, almost like painting, using a paintbrush on the skin. And if you're getting um, lots of blood or you're getting the skin and it's like really red and raised up, it can be a number of things. Um, but the chances are it's either your machine's running too, um, too hard, too fast uh, to, for your hand speed, or it could be just you're pressing on too hard, you're just putting too much pressure on the skin. So that's the eye we're talking about. I shaded that before and now I've gone back to it because I'm happy with the shade that's settled into it so I can go back and add a little bit more to it now. This bit here again, what I'm doing, I'm shading off the dark areas with a lighter ink, so it'll be like a double six. I'm just going around the negative writing now, bringing all that together. And at this point with the tattoo, um, I, I would have wiped it down. You know, I don't need the stencil anymore. All my major bits are in there. So for me, when all the, the major details are in and it's just a matter of shading it off, the, the, the pressure's off then. Um, that's when you can really start to enjoy the tattoo and really like start refining it, polishing it, uh, and going to town on, on all the detail, bringing it all together. So all I'm doing on this now, you see I'm just shading off. I'll be using just the dynamic black for this. Just nice gentle strokes. And even shading with black, it's never gonna go in solid black if you're shading with it. So it's gonna take a few passes just to, to bring that blackness up. Now I'm going to be moving on and I'm coming towards the end of the tattoo now uh, and I've gone back to the liner and then I've obviously I've, I've upped my power setting again to 11 volts and I'm putting in all these white highlights. Now when using white I think less is more. Um, I know some people go to town like putting white over everything but I think if you just select a few areas, um, it has more of an impact on the tattoo than um, just trying to line the whole thing in white. Um, and white ink as well, it's, um, it's a funny one. It doesn't work like, like black ink. Um, I've covered this in another video. I'll put that card up on the screen um, and that will explain like when and when not to use white and how it works in the skin. So you can see the tattoos are like really coming together now and just those few little highlights is really making it pop. Um, just those few areas. Just a little highlight in the eye there as well. Just those selected few places, you can really see it popping there, especially on the, on the mask on the front of his face there. And it's always good practice. Um, if you are going to leave a highlight, to leave the skin blank anyway, where the highlight's going to go. Uh, and that way, if the white ink doesn't take, then you're still going to have the highlight there when the tattoo is healed. Um, rather than trying to put like a white highlight on top of solid black, because the chances are if you do that, um, it's going to fade. And you, you're going to, when the tattoo is healed, it's, you, you're going to have no highlight there at all. Um, whenever I do tattoos, I always do it in the, in, in the mindset of what it's going to look like when it's fully healed. And a big mistake to make would be to try and go highlighting over solid black. Um, say, because when that tattoo is fully healed, it's not going to look um, half as good as what 
is going to look if you just take those precautions and leave the highlights skin colour and then reinforce them with white. You can see absolutely no blood there at all. It's all gone in nice. The leg doesn't look angry. Uh, the ink's just sat in there. It's nice and smooth. I'm just scrubbing up there with that liner. You can actually do highlights with a mag as well. Uh, and you get like a pretty cool effect if you like scrub in white with a mag. But for this tattoo, I didn't need to do that. And it just looks like I'm coming towards the end of the tattoo now. Just a few more little highlights. And then the client's favourite part of the tattoo, the wipe down, because that means it's over. And you can see it there, I've just used Tattoo Goo Pro Series to wipe that down there and it just freshens the skin up, uh, takes the heat out of the leg. And there it is guys, and that's the full tattoo. So if you have liked this video guys, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. Uh, any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll answer as many as I can and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers guys.